Welcome everyone back to another episode of Pop Rant Radio presents Spooktober. Yay. Ooh, you didn't even do it that time. I didn't know. <laughs> It's fine. Ooh. There it is. <laughs> just, just edit, just, dub it in. Just edit it together, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so today we watched four we watched episodes of the Goosebumps television show from the 90s. Two regulars and one, like, one two regular two shows. One two-parter. And then, like, one two-parter, yeah. Yeah. So half an hour long each. So one of them, I mean, without commercials, they're, like, 20 minutes. Oh, but there's still breaks. Oh, yeah. They're still clear as hell, like... Fade to black, pause for a second, fade in. Danger break. We cut right back into the action. Yeah. So, oh man, this was <laughs> this was rough. So. Yeah. Well, so as a kid, I didn't read much Goosebumps. Our library at my elementary school had a couple of them. I remember reading one about praying mantises that are huge. And I remember seeing on TV the one that's like, don't go in the basement because dad's growing plants. Dad's growing pot. Don't go in the basement to find his pot leaves. Not until you're older, son. Right. Uh, I did, however, read a lot of the Choose Your Own Adventure ones. Yes, that's the ones that I'm most familiar with as well. The one where the common rule was the chess rule, where if you don't take your hand off the piece, you you don't die. <laughs> right, yeah. Huh. Should I follow the knight into the dungeon, or should I go back the way I came? Yeah, I'll follow the knight. Page 37, page 37. Yeah. Ah, ah, I mean, go back the way I came. Look, I, I didn't take my hand off the page. You've seen it, Lois, right? You've seen my hand on the page. Yeah, Peter, i seen it. It's always like a choice like, trust Jason or trust Lucy. And you flip the trust Lucy. It's like, Lucy pulls out a knife and you're dead. And then I always have a little quip at the end where it's like, you shouldn't have trusted women. Zing, zing. <laughs> There's always the one series of events where it's like, go back to the beginning of the book because time restarts or right. some nonsense. Thanks for buying my book. I'm R.L. Stein. $20, not refundable. <laughs> Jack Black will portray me in a movie one day. And I will be the janitor. He makes a cameo in the very end and he's like, super old and like i i didn't even get it was him i kind of figured it was him because like the way they said it mm -hmm. they're like oh it's the janitor hey janitor he's like get out of my school and it was like oh it's arl stein <laughs> like says something he's like get out of my school or good morning i don't remember because i blocked that movie so and i'm sure everyone who's listening to this is familiar but goosebumps was a series of books written by author rl stein and they were scary books for kids real lame stein <laughs> and they were all like pg rated yeah and then in the 90s nick i think it was i believe it was nickelodeon that would make sense through, uh, a canadian filmmaking company worked together to bring the books to the television. Yeah, adapted them to the silver screen. Yep, in glorious children actor style. Yeah, so we watched... So, the, uh, I guess we'll, let's do this. So, we, <laughs> we, so the first the first episode we watched was, was the, the Headless best. Ghost. It was the best of the It three. was the best one, which we soon discovered. I mean, it's real bad, but <laughs> the, uh, the next two... And I thought it was going to be the worst when I looked up the like, little plot synopses on netflix which these are all netflix so afterwards go check them out i read it and i was like this sounds like crap like this is gonna be great <laughs> so it's basically it's these two kids go stephanie, to no is it stephanie yeah stephanie, stephanie and Dwayne. and Dwayne. 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 god and so, stephanie's stephanie's entire character cue is just be a little shit right so there's this like haunted house tour called it's not the house on the hill it's the hill house yes the haunted hill house <laughs> this this old sea captain looking dude spoilers Ooh. gives gives tours of the house and it opens up with him narrating like the history of the house well actually it opens up with in the past but with like the crappiest editing i've ever it's seen like, like the camera so many just jump cuts. jerks like yes. to the right and then jerks to the right but Someone didn't watch it before they jerked the camera, so there's a lot of like discrepancies, like yeah. people positions and like the cat. It's real bad. And so, we joke, we joke that the the mom and the kid are like not even in the same room because yes, they're just really they're, close up they're, shots. They're only in one shot together, and the rest of the time it looks like they were clearly filmed on different days. Yeah. So there's this little boy, and it's clearly like colonial times. the The kid is like oh, I want to see this ghost that supposedly haunts the house. And the mom comes in and is like, Why aren't you in bed? I was just going, Mama. Mm -hmm. That's a likely story. You were looking for that ghost again, weren't you? No, I wasn't, Mama. Honest. And she leaves. 
And then the ghost comes out and it's like, I want your head. Right, but it looks like Beaker. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's a silhouette. It just, it then, just looks like Beaker the puppet. Uh, and then the kid gets his head ripped off off screen. Yep. <laughs> That's the thing that happens. And then cut to present day, which is like 1996. Yeah. Old sea captain looking dude giving a tour of the house. He's like narrating and like, and the boy's head came off and that's what happened. And then this like 65 year old lady is like, no, tell me more. Like, <laughs> And then what happened? What did the ghost do? The ghost pulled Andrew's head off and hid it somewhere in the house. Like, this is clearly like, about these hauntings. Right. It's clearly like, this is like for kids. This is like for little kids right. to scare them. And this, this woman, this full grown adult ass woman is like, oh, is it true? Like, it. what the fuck? <laughs> She's full buying it. Then we get introduced to Dwayne, who's this doofy kid. Who has like the entire like speech memorized, like mouthing it as yes. he's saying it. So clearly he's been through the tour many times. Right. And then we get introduced to Stephanie because she's hiding under the couch and like grabs another little girl's leg who, and scares her. Yeah. And she's like, ha ha, I scared you. There was because, not nearly enough laughs in there. Because I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. Did you see the look on that little girl's face? Ugh. She's like, ha 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 ha, we got him. Ha, 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 ha. So then the sea captain kicks Dwayne and Stephanie out of the house. You know, Dwayne's not doing he anything. He didn't do shit. So... <laughs> So Stephanie's like, oh, we scared him really good. We're going to keep scaring him. And Dwayne's like, maybe we're too old for this. And she's like, shut up, Dwayne. <laughs> so then the next night, they take the tour again. And then the sea captain's like, oh, I see you're back. You're behaving yourselves this time. After he told them you're not welcome back. Yeah. Each of these portraits represents some poor soul who tried to live in this house and then died a horrible and grisly death. They take the tour, but then they go off the main tour and they yeah. find this, the old sea captain, not the same guy, woo, it's office. Yeah. And it's full of like bottled ships. And they're like, we have to find the little boy's head. Right. And she does not one, but two fake outs to Dwayne. <laughs> and Dwayne, even after the first one's like, all right, no more fake outs. She's like, oh my God, Dwayne, this is super serious over here, dude. This time I'm not kidding. What? Look, where? Is it the head? Oh man, I can't believe I fell for that twice. Nothing, idiot. Psych. She's horrible. Then they meet another little boy named Seth, and Seth is like, I heard you guys talking last night. If you want to see the headless ghost, you have to wait for the house to close up and all the tourists go home. That's when the real stuff happens. Then Seth takes them back into the house through like the secret entrance. The basement, I think is what he said. Yeah, and then they go upstairs to the, the captain's secret quarters. Well, first they go to a room. Sure. And we get like, she, Sophie oh, just yeah, goes he... on the wall and like turns this wheel and she's like, what's this? And Seth's like, let me tell you a story. <laughs> there was a kid here, super greedy. And he liked strawberry ice cream. And the strawberry ice cream was in the fridge and the maid had to get so much strawberry ice cream and send him the strawberry ice cream up the dumbwaiter because he loves strawberry ice cream. They say it like eight times. And then the kid fell down the dumbwaiter and died. It was hard to tell the difference between the boy's face and the strawberry ice cream. Ooh, twist. So they go up oh, to wow. the cabins, the sea captain's secret quarters. <laughs> where Seth it's is... It's a staircase. Just it's just a staircase that leads up to nowhere. Right, you and I were joking that, like, if someone found this staircase, they're like, well, nothing's here. <laughs> Glad I climbed this. There's no room here. They get into the secret quarters, and Seth is like, I'm the little boy, and I need a new head, so I'm gonna kill you, Dwayne. Because your head looks good, and Dwayne's, like, his last-ditch attempt to save himself <laughs> is like, my head's not that great either. I mean, it gets allergies. It's, it's not that good at math, and it's ha it's hair never does what you want it to. Nice try, Dwayne. <laughs> good job, Dwayne. You did it. So then, then the actual ghost of the little boy appears yeah. with his head off, and he's like playing around with his head, and his ghost body drops his head. Clumsy fool! It's a head, not a bowling ball. And it's it's so supposed to be like yuck yuck yuck, but it's just it's so terrible. so dumb. So then he just leaves. Seth is like, oh, I guess I really wasn't the ghost. Then the sea captain, spoilers, comes upstairs. <laughs> and he's like, I'm the sea captain who was previously mentioned. 
This is one of my ex-employees. He's a little shit. I'm going to... He's like, Dwayne, you can go ahead and leave. Would you please leave us, Dwayne? I would like to have a few words with Stephanie. Dwayne's like, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with this situation. <laughs> Except everything. I'll leave my 12-year-old friend with this creepy man. Yeah. That's fine. The sea captain. Ooh, it is the sea captain. He starts painting Stephanie's picture. Right, but because... with, with the paint bucket tool from, like, <laughs> from Microsoft Paint. MS Paint. paint. <laughs> like, he touches the, the, like, the canvas once and it, like, paints itself. So, because the idea is that every time somebody dies in the house, their portrait gets painted. Yeah. But all the portraits of all the people are normal, except for the kid who's it's holding Andrew. his own head. And then Dwayne's like, and wait a up. minute. And he runs back upstairs. Yeah. And then he just kind of grabs Stephanie and drags her out. Because Stephanie's like disappearing, like McFly style from Back yeah. to the Future. He like throws water on, on the, like, canvas. the canvas. And like it melts. You and I were really hoping it was going <laughs> to Raiders like melt her face. Melt her face. So they run out of the house, and they're like, yay, we escaped, and then cut to like six months later or whatever, and the- it's the next day. The, this couple is like looking at the house like, oh, I heard this house was haunted. We're gonna buy it. Hee hee. And the realtor's like, yes, ooh hoo hoo. And haunted. the camera turns, oh, the realtor is the sea captain. Twist. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> and then the credits play. Yep. With that wonderful song. And uh, I'll tell you right now, listeners, that's the best that's one. the best one. The other ones are so terrible. Oh, you, you take Worm Boy. Uh, so I actually remember this one as a book because I remember, I remember when these like were like, I don't think they were coming out when I was in school, but I think that like our library was getting them. And I remember several kids that I talked to were like reading the new one, you know? Some of them I heard were really good, like the mask one or like the dummy. But I heard one of them was just garbage. And it was this one called Go Eat Worms. And when I found out that they had actually adapted this one, we had to watch this one. <laughs> so Go Eat Worms stars John and his friend, black friend, um, <laughs> are like in his basement. And John is like, he's like obsessed with worms. Yeah, he has a big, he has a big aquarium tank full of earthworms. Like Riddler obsessed Batman's like level <laughs> yeah, of obsession. Yeah, from like, like Batman Forever when it's Jim Carrey just like, yes. woo, kooky. Yeah. So his sister comes downstairs and they're competing in the science fair or something. <laughs> and her sister's like, I'm doing a project on robins. I have robin eggs and a robin nest and a paper mache robin. A giant paper mache yes. robin. John being the D-bag that he is places worms in the robin's beak so that when she opens the beak like she drops it it breaks then when she's running upstairs he also placed worms on the handrail he really got he her he really did it this time he's a fucking prankster so then she's like i'll get you for this cut to the next day john and black friend are in like <laughs> we the cafeteria to, we have to figure out his name i have no idea what his name let's is. call him zach the next day we have John and let's just Zach and they're in the cafeteria and like John's like, we got for lunch. And he's like, I got a sandwich. And Zach's like, I got a burger. No, whatever. So John has spaghetti. Zach has a burger. And like, they're like, let's switch. So then Zach's like about to eat the spaghetti and there's worms in it. And John's like, oh no, I didn't do that. And Zach's like, we're done being friends. And he just leaves. <laughs> yeah. Zach is like. You put worms in the spaghetti and try to feed it to me? And John's like, no. No, I didn't. He's like, fuck you. And he just like he walks stips. away. He's like, I'm done. We're done being friends. He leaves the cafeteria. He no, skips lunch. He's just like, I'm not going to allow you to explain. I know we've been best friends for years, but I don't care. Oh, gross. Is this supposed to be funny? I didn't do it. Sure. That's why you want to swap? You and your stupid jokes. Why would I? You're my best friend. Not anymore. Right. Done. Later on that night... John, like, is convinced that it's his sister. He goes to sleep. We get weird shots of worms. Then he, like, wakes up because his face is in a pile of worms. And then he's, like... The it... worms have crawled through, like, the ventilation yeah. system of the house. <laughs> They're in the ventilation show. <laughs> Sir, they've gone up the ventilation shaft. And then, like, there's, like, the kind of, like, the Godfather reveal with the horse head in the bed. Like, he's like, oh, something's on my feet. And he lifts it up, and it's three worms. Like, we were thinking it was going to be, like a, like, a whole sea of them. And he's like, ugh. But it's literally, like, two big ones. Yeah, it's this reoccurring three worms. Yeah. And, oh, side note, John's mom is super pissed at him about, yes. about liking worms. Because his room has, like, weird garden hoses that look like worms. It's just, his room is decorated with all worms shit. He has the same poster twice, we found out, too. <laughs> 
No wonder I don't get in here more often. But his mom looks like a like an older like cousin of Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> she which does. Is weird. So John is convinced that it's his sister, and his mom and him have this weird court dialogue back and forth. You know what's not funny? What you did to her, Robin. You've already put me on trial and found me guilty. You wouldn't let a judge treat your client like that, would you? If you were my client, I'd tell you to plead insanity. What? <laughs> it's so... Like, this would be weird and kind of funny if, like, she, like, was like, I'm a, I'm back from being a lawyer, and he was like, I'm gonna hit you with some lawyer puns, but, like, there's no setup. It's, it's it so, just happens. It's so contrived. John, the next day, goes and awkwardly stands on his mark and then waits for his cue, which he misses <laughs> by a couple seconds, to walk up to Zach's locker. He's like, hey, dude, let's go get pizza. And Zach's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> he's just, like, okay with it. And he's like... Hold on, I, I need to go up more worms. I'm gonna go down to the pond, dig up some more worms. Zach's like, oh, I can't go with you with that. My mom wants me to shampoo the dog. <laughs> Not wash the dog, shampoo the dog. And like, I was like, that's a weird innuendo about something else. It's so specific. He's like, but then I'll ask about the sleepover. She should be fine with that. Tonight I'm going down the lake to dig for fresh ones. Coming? Nah, mom wants me to shampoo the dog. But I'll ask her about sleeping over tonight. Right, I can't go out with you tonight, but I can sleep over tonight. Right. Dialogue is such garbage. I thought it was going to be like right after school he was going to go do it, but he doesn't until it's like waits, it's dark out. He waits till like nine o'clock at night. Right. So he goes to like little pond that has a street lamp next to it <laughs> for no reason. And then it all of a sudden gets misty and then he slips through like a hole. Yeah, there's like just a big hole in the ground. He basically falls into quicksand. Yeah. And then he shows up in like this weird hallway that you and I joked about was probably like a six foot set. Right. That they just had to keep shooting from different angles to make it look like it was longer. Yeah, he falls underground into like this elaborate cave system. And it's real, it looks real rough. Like yeah. They, they like keep splashing weird color lights on the Yeah, walls. they have like a green light and they're and, like, like ooh, it's one. mystic, ooh. He's like walking around the flashlight and then eventually he finds the worms have written a message on the wall where I it's... forgot about this. Todd, we're going... Wait, did it say Todd? Yeah. Was his name Todd or John? His name's Todd, but just, just say John. It's fine. Who cares? Zach says John, though. It doesn't matter. Ton <laughs> Todd sees this message on the wall that says, Todd, we're going to make you squirm. And then, like, in the end, he sees, like, three worms sticking out again. And he's like, oh, God. And I was like, oh, man, please let there be this weird giant worm down here that's going to screw with them. And we got our wishes. <laughs> and he runs away, and there's this giant worm, and it, like, chases him up. And he's like running away and then they, it like grabs him. It's like pulling him back down. And I was like, again, like I called everything in this stupid short. <laughs> I was like, Robins are going to attack it. Yep. But the worm sees the giant paper, paper mache, mache Robin. Because his sister's walking through the woods. Yeah, her sister and her friend are just walking randomly through the woods. But they don't with, see the worm. With the paper mache Robin. And the worm like freaks out and like zips underground. And his sister's like, what are you doing out here? Like, what are you doing out here? It is impossible for you not to have seen the giant worm. Right. Like, he's, and like he, her friend's even like, he dirtied up his clothes for a joke. What a loser. <laughs> Worms on the brain. And it's like, what is this? <laughs> I can't believe he'd wreck his clothes just to play that dumb trick. What can I tell you? He's nuts. Worms on the brain. Then we get back to his house. He's like purging all the worms. He's done with them. And then we jump to the next day and we get this really weird scene where he's on a dock with Zach and he's like, I'm done with worms. We're going to go fishing. We'll do experiments on fish. You know, we'll see if they like hot water or cold water or seawater, whatever. Zach's like, dude, that's stupid. <laughs> and like all of a sudden, John just like is like, I'm going to eat this sandwich. I love your sandwich, Zach. And Zach's like, that ain't my sandwich, dude. And he bites it, and there's, like, this clear string in it that anyone could see. Yeah. And he gets, like, ripped into the water. Yeah, it's like it's like a fishing line attached to the sandwich that he bites into. <laughs> and then he's like, whoa! And he, like, gets pulled out into the water. Let go of the sandwich, John! Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> then we get the best part of the whole episode. They saved it for the end. The camera sits at water level where it's half underwater half above right it's like a pov shot underwater and we get this really weird dialogue just from todd john's perspective while he's like yeah I'm, no i won't do that i was just kidding no i love fish won't you let me oh really thanks you're gonna make me swim back they've got me i'm off I'm too 
That's how it ends. <laughs> the end. Like, what is going? Like, why we don't see? We don't see any it, fish. It is like they just they put the camera in the water and then they're like, "All right, voiceover, John, you just say, oh, thanks for letting me go. I promise I'll never fish again. Oh, you're gonna make me swim back. Credits. Yeah. They 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 could only afford one giant animal costume. They couldn't afford like a fish suit. So this one, this is the worst one. Yes. So the. <sighs> So the first one is not good, but it's like, all right, we have a dead ghost kid from a long time ago, then we have a haunted house, then we have the kids that are messing around the haunted house, and then we have the evil sea captain ghost who's trying to turn the kids into ghosts, they get away, and then the sea captain's trying to like sell the haunted house to the couple, gotcha. There's at least like a theme, there's right. at least like... All right, haunted house, ghost well, and kids it's, and haunted house. And he, and it's kind of like there's like that eerie moment where like he's like painting the picture and the other two kids are like right next to him, like like a come join us kind of thing. Yeah, like that's kind of eerie. There's nothing eerie about a pile of worms. Right. This is like the the basic through line of this is there's a kid who likes worms and then he gets attacked by a giant worm. Right. And then he's like, I'm not gonna mess with worms anymore. Let's go fishing. And then the fish are like, Don't you dare! And then presumably he gets attacked by a giant fish. That's it. That's what happens. Like, there's no theme. Right. There's no. There's just nothing. Like, I was like trying to piece it together because like there's like a kind of through line of he wants to run experiments on animals. Yeah. So the. It opens still, up with him, like, dissecting a worm. Yeah, because that's a really weird opening. But it's they, like a worm cut open. But he seems to just think worms are really cool. Like, besides the dissection, he's not like, Oh, I got you worms now. I'm going to kill right. you. And, like, this there's like nothing. The ant bully, he's not like, like he's on the, you know, like an anthill with a magnifying glass. Right, he's not, like, torturing the worms or anything. Like, he just likes worms. Yeah. And then the worm's like, we're going to get you now. Like, it just... This, You're like, going to squirm now, Todd. so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, it was really bad. It was bad. It was so stupid. So our last story... There were no quotes around story. Is, it's about this this kid named Skipper. Yep. That's terrible. Who, who lives who, in a time capsule. Who lives in the 1940s. When he's at home, like, his dad looks like... It's Leave it to Beaver. Yeah, it is Leave it to Beaver, like... Their kitchen has, like, the black and white checkerboard tiling. With, like, the weird, like, bubblegum pop, like, wall colors. Yeah, all of the walls are, like, pastel right. paints. Right, Mom is, Mom's constantly cooking while she's reading, like, erotica novels or whatever. And then, so Skipper's really into comic books. And his dad comes in and is like, You shouldn't be reading them comic books. You should be doing your homework. Skipper, what did I say about those comic books? No reading comic books till all your homework is finished. Is all his homework finished? Hello, dear. Is all your homework finished? Those comic books will rot your brain and yep. fucking jump and jelly beans. Make you have kids early and <laughs> give you cancer or whatever. He does say jump and jelly beans. This is amazing. That is the thing he says. Jump and jelly beans. I, I tell you, those things are gonna ruin that kid. Then when Skipper goes to school, it's like 1995. Right. It's like, like it, jumps time. It's just it's just like a regular junior high. He talks to his presumably best friend. The geologist. Yeah, who's I don't know his name. We're gonna call him Rocky. He's like yep. this super nerdy kid, glasses. He has a t-shirt on that has the periodic <laughs> table on yep. it. And he's super into rocks. He's talking about how awesome rocks are. He has a pretty strong monologue towards the end <laughs> about rocks. I don't get what the big deal about comic books is. Well, I'll get you and your rocks. Skipper's like, yeah, but you should read comic books because comic books are way cooler. And the main comic he reads is The Great Gazelle. Well, no, the comic book is called The Masked Mutant because it doesn't and, make sense. Right. The Masked Mutant is the bad guy. Right. And the good guy is like the great the, gazelle. The galloping gazelle. The galloping gazelle. And, oh, and we get voiceover at the very beginning from Adam West. Right. Over like second grade drawings of like what Batman would look like with no ears. It's supposed to be like him reading the comic, but there's no like speech bubbles. It's all just pictures. Right. <laughs> and then so then skipper gets on the bus to go home right where he and then he meets libby yep who's this little blonde girl who has enormous brown eyebrows <laughs> and two giant worms and she's like do you cut comic books 
Yeah. So do I. What kind? High school Harry and Beanhead. Aw, oh, man, those are the worst. That's stupid. You're oh, stupid. Suck. You're a girl who reads comics that I could talk to? You're stupid. Like, right. it's so he dumb. Blow, he blows his one shot. Uh, oh, also, the mass mutant escapes from the comic book. Right, and like this weird, it was kind of, an, it was kind of campy and I liked it. Effect where like, yeah. it's like a, it's just a picture of his face on the comic cover and it's like, it's, yeah, the, it starts to like push out. Yeah, the paper gets like stretched out and it's like, he's clearly like it's coming like, it's out of the like, comic. Like kind of like Space Jam or something. So he meets Libby, he gets off the bus in the middle of nowhere. He's like, I missed my stop. I don't know where he was going because he missed right. his stop by like 20 feet. And then he gets off the bus and he's on like the he's docks. on an underpass. <laughs> he sees the mass mutant's giant purple fortress. Which is clearly CG'd. Just like sitting in the middle of the street. And he like looks at the comic book and he's like, oh, that's, that's the mass mutant's fortress. Holy crap. Jumping. Jelly beans. And he like goes up and he looks inside and the effects it's are just, so it's real bad. It's CG. So he goes to school the next day and tells his friend, <laughs> hey, I saw the mass mutant. Layer and his friends like. Friends like, does this does this rock look like a goose? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hold it like this, it's like a duck. A duck? Did this morning. Looked like a goose when I got it. Well, his friends like, who wrote the comic? Well, clearly, what happened is he came into town. He's driving down the street and he sees this weird building. And he thinks, what a great building! It'd be perfect. The secret headquarters of the masked mutant. So they copied it for the comic book. <laughs> and then he, Skipper goes back to the docks and the building's not there. And yeah. then Libby like appears behind him, which that makes more sense when we get to the end and we figure yeah. out who Libby is. And she's like, rah, mutant attack. And he's like, oh my God. So they go up to where the building was and it turns out there's an invisible force shield. Right, which he finds out from the comic book. Yes, he gets first... he gets mailed a comic. Right. His dad's like, you got some mail, it's a comic. His dad's all of a sudden okay with it. Like, yeah. they set up in the beginning where I was expecting his dad to, like, be like, no more comics, and, like, throw them away. Yeah. Like, his dad, like, is done with that immediately. He's like, they're fine. So, they go inside the fortress. It is so great because it's clear that they just have, like, an image, like a JPEG yeah of this background of this like evil lair. Or like, so, like a screensaver effect. Yes, so the two kids have to walk in place <laughs> in front of a green screen yep. and then they zoom in on the picture. It's so great, it's so bad. Yeah, it looks like garbage. It's so awesome. And the best thing is like I said, there is one part where they pivot <laughs> And the pivot is the same movement of them walking, and it, like you, it immediately just breaks it. Like you're <sighs> like, okay, no. They get in an elevator, and it takes them down. Then instead of press, because he presses up, he presses up on the clearly he painted wall. Up and then four. Right, and it makes that's how that works. It makes button sound effects, but they are definitely not buttons. Nope. They get to the bottom floor. They're like, what are we gonna do? And Libby's like, let's let's go. Let's just go home. Let's get out of here. And Skipper's like, yeah, you're right. They get in the elevator. Elevator won't work anymore. Right. So they, they take like five steps out. And Louis's like, do you see any elevators? <laughs> he's right next to you. Do, of yeah. course he's not going to see any elevators. Do you see any other elevators? I don't know, Libby. I'm only standing six inches away from you. Right. So my point of view isn't very different from it's yours. It's the same damn you view. You stupid, stupid person. <laughs> So then they start walking through the hallways. Walking with quotes around. It's there. it's a shot of both of them walking together, and then it cuts to Skipper walking, and he's like, "Libby, where'd you go?" Like she just disappears. I know you and I were just like, "What is going on?" <laughs> it's so bad. It's not even effectively edited. It's just like right. We don't see her like slip away. We nope. don't see someone grab her. It just cuts to another and shot, gone. and she's not there. He walks into a room where there's an easel and like artwork. Right, there's like a rainbow of folders. He opens up the folders and there's artwork of him right, as well looking as like, at the artwork. As well as Mass Mutant, and we get introduced to the greatest comic book creation of all time, <laughs> the League of Good Guys. The League of Good Guys is yes. the name of the, clearly not the Justice that, League. That is what every mom in like the 60s referred to the Justice <laughs> League when she would talk to her kids. The League of Good Guys. Right. Oh, Batman is part of the, you know, that, that League of, the League of Good Guys. Then Skipper hears something behind him turns around and oh no it's the mass mutants right and then cut for the episode into the episode to be continued all right we'll talk to you guys next week <laughs> with the thrilling conclusion <laughs> when part two begins it turns out oh 
It was just Libby who had a cardboard cutout standee of yeah. the mass mutant. This earned the loudest F you from both of us. <laughs> That was just Get out of here. In this basement, and she was like, I decided to scare you. She's like, I found another elevator, and then we just cut and they're outside. Right. Like they just they just they found the secret exit to and the dungeon. She's like, I gotta go see it, and then she flashes off. She just runs away, disappears. Great. He goes home again and talks to his stupid friend again, and his friend's like, Ooh, rocks. Right. But this is where we get the amazing monologue where he's like, I saw these pictures and they were me, and his friend's like, You know. That's what I like about collecting my rocks. There's nothing weird about them. No invisible rocks. No rocks that look like me. I like that about them. Rocks don't try to kill me. Some rocks don't look like me. Rocks are my friends. That's why I love rocks. Right, that's why I love rocks. He says it's, it totally it's straight. great. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's so perfect. And then the guy's like, all right, he leaves. <laughs> and like, this is the exit of Rocky. Like, he's done. He so show Rocky's back. gone. Dad's gone from yeah, the movie. Yeah, Dad disappears. Yeah. the uh, it's just so, Mom, who's like freaking olive oil. So Skipper goes back to... No, so Skipper gets the, the last comic in the mail. And it's a comic that shows him going into... It's the, like the lair. The, the lair. And the very last panel is the galloping gazelle needs help from the kid. Yeah. So he goes back to the... To save the world. He goes back to the lair, goes in the basement, where he finds the galloping gazelle is tied up, and it's Adam West. Yes. You're the galloping gazelle. You're real. Real tired of waiting. Turn that heat off. Come on, I'm broiling. In a terrible costume. Right. It's like this really weird rubbery costume with what looks like real gazelle horns on it. <laughs> And the worst fake ab pack. Yes. It has like ab imprints on the outside of the outfit, but then you can still kind of see Adam West's like fat roll around <laughs> it. Because this is like, this is the 90s when he didn't care anymore. It's so great. So the gazelle sits down in a chair and he's like, we've got to think about this. He's like, this chair isn't really comfy. Just take a little off the top. Trim around the horns, please. <laughs> And the mass mutant is the chair and like a snake he summons a cobra like comes out of the armrest. And like Adam West has the greatest line ever where he just goes, There's a snake in my face! There's a snake in my face! <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean this is the 90s, and like the only thing I can think about is maybe that was a, a Toy Story reference. I get like, yeah. There's a snake in, in my, my boots. boots. So, Doesn't work. So the gazelle is like, well, we can't do anything. I'm out of here. And he runs away. Wait! Where are you going? He's right. I'm too old for this superhero stuff. You're on your own, kid. Right. After we get, like, this goofy, like, he goes over to this door and he knocks on it and it opens. And then we have two jokes about how his antlers don't fit through the doorway. And then he just leaves and he's done. Gazelle leaves. In walks Libby through the door. Right. Which, once again. And just out of nowhere. Hello. And Skipper's like, what are you doing here? And she's like. Oh no, hey, I'm the mass mutant. Turns out I'm the bad guy disguised as a little girl. Oh, didn't see that coming. I know, I know. He's a mass mutant. He could be anything. He could even be me. I really wish he would have been like, girls don't read comics, you idiot. <laughs> right. Like that has been perfect. You thought a girl reads comic books? What kind of interested in you? Dumbass are you? <laughs> Go lose weight. Have you seen yourself? Look in the mirror. They make like four fat jokes to this kid too. His dad makes like three of them. Right, because Skipper's like, I'm not very hungry. Is there something wrong with a spaghetti skipper? Oh, no, I'm just not that hungry. Hmm. There's the first. Mark it on the calendar. Fuck you, dude. Asshole. Skipper is left with a mass mutant, and they're in this this conversation, and the mass mutant just keeps laughing over and over again. <laughs> this scene was so brutal, and it, it, yeah, it it starts to spiral. <laughs> it's so it bad. Spirals real like, bad. It just goes on for way too long. The mass mutant is convinced that. This kid is a superhero. Right. And then so he's like, oh, yeah, I'm Colossal Colossal, colossal Elastic Boy. Right, because there was a moment earlier on where he kind of strokes out for a bit when he walks into the building. <laughs> like, he, like, he's like, oh, did you feel that light? And Libby's like, no. <laughs> and, like, then the mass Mutant's like... No relevance. Right, mass Mutant's like, you remember that? That's when you're no longer a person. Now you're a comic book character, you piece of shit. It's right, like, just it's great. And then the kid's like, well... I better not tell you that my one weakness is sulfuric acid. Oh, no. Oops. And the shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and the mass mutant's like, ha you told me you can't take it back. I'll turn into sulfuric acid to kill you. And then so he does, 
But then the kid's like, ha, if you turn into liquid, you die. And you can't turn back. And Mass Mutant's like, oh no, why did I not remember that? And then he dies. Yep. That's not established earlier in the no. story. Like, there's no point where he's like, oh yeah, he, if he turns into liquid. So then he goes home. Well, we, we get this really funny scene where I, I feel like it's the actor being uncomfortable. Where he like... <sighs> He like just starts to cackle for no reason, and then he just he just quickly runs off the set. <laughs> like he's like, ha, 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 uh, and like just gets off. So Skipper goes home, and it, what, his mom's making him breakfast. He's like eating soup or something. Yeah, and she's like, oh, you don't want to eat your soup, and he's like, oh, I'm just depressed. And then she's like, well, what? A new comic arrived for you, and he's like, oh, just throw it away. I don't care. And then there's like paint on his hand yeah, like a rainbow and she's like oh let me clean off your hand right and she's like, like it's like a five-year-old grabs his his hand and like sh shoves him over to the sink and like starts scrubbing his hand with a sponge and then we hear this like stretchy sound like, effect i'm gonna go watch tv and then it turns out he really is colossal elastic boy and can stretch and he's in costume and he's in costume he looks like the hamburglar yeah, from mcdonald's and then <laughs> He, he like stretches and he gets his hand back and he's like, stretch it. Stretch it. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> uh, so those are the three Goosebumps stories that we watched. Oof. There's like 50 of these. I mean, the, yeah, there's like, I think there's like four or five seasons of this show. And like, this is kind of low-hanging fruit. Clearly, they're made for kids. Yeah. We get it. But, like, so at least the first one, again, had some sort of, like, through line. They establish, okay, this kid died and lost his head, and there's ghosts, and it's haunted, and, like, it all, like, makes sense, quote-unquote, right. within the context of the story. The worm one is just all over the map. It makes no sense. Like, it has no ending either. Just, just, yeah, it just doesn't have an ending. Like, just cuts to credits on... Right a voiceover that makes no sense him fighting minnows and then and the superhero one was just what was that called what was that uh, one it was called? like like rise of the mutant or like night of the mutant or something, something like, like that. that yeah part one and two the idea is basically okay there's a kid and he reads comic books and then the comic book comes to life and he has right. to be the hero cool i get it but it's just the, again like with the whole your weakness is if you turn a liquid you die they just they like they make shit up. Like they were like, all right, we got five minutes. We gotta go. <laughs> right. They just keep introducing like new plot threads. Like, oh, well, we. How does he beat him? Oh, uh, if he turns into liquid, he dies. Yeah. It uh, kinda, write it. Okay. Put that in. It kind of felt like when you were like kids and you would like play pretend, you know, and you'd yeah. be like, I my character uses fire on you, and well, my character's fire resistant. I use rocks on you. Well, I'm behind a giant shield that I'm both, right. like. Well, I have a force shield. Yeah. Right. It's that one-up contest. Just over and over. That was the entire thing. Where they constantly were changing the rules against each other. But you do have to hand it to the guy that played the Mass Mutant, who I thought for a second in the beginning, and I got really hopeful that it was Mark Hamill, because <laughs> his laugh is very Joker-esque. Yes. But it's not. No, it is not. This guy. Yeah. Dude, this guy commits. The guy that plays the Mass Mutant is awesome. Like, he's having a great time. Yeah, and I think it's the only reason why that one was okay for a while. Yeah. Was because you had a guy who was actually doing a really decent job as Mass Mutant, and you have Adam West as the Galloping Gazelle, which <laughs> sounds like a D-list but, Justice League villain. But what's great is that the Galloping Gazelle is a shit hero in the right. story. Like, he's just like, well, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm just going to run away because I don't know what to do. Well, and his ability is that he, he can jump. Yeah, he can, like, teleport jump. He's Slipknot. Yeah. He can climb <laughs> he can things. He can climb things. Oh, well, he leaves the story, but as quick as Slipknot did. <laughs> yeah, so th and that part was funny where it's like Adam West is tied up and the skipper's untying him. He's like, what kind of superhero are you? Do you have powers? What do you... Did you use your super radar, cyber, whatever to get here? Uh, I rode the bus. And he's like, oh, well, that's not very superhero. Like, <laughs> that was kind of fun. But It's just Adam West charm. Yeah, yeah. It's just, that's all that it is. So these are pretty dumb. But we had a really fun time oh, watching yeah. them. They are the, delightful. There were so many times where we were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Especially with those worms. Oh, the worms. So, yippee. So this has been our episode on R.L. Stein's Goosebumps television series. Not the movie. All available on Netflix, so feel free to watch them this Halloween and have some fun. Or don't. Sit around with some friends. Yep. <laughs> make some fun. And you can hear the dog bark the theme. 
Woof, 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 woof. As he has this really horribly photoshopped demon eye picture put over his uh, eyes. It's so, so great. That so, intro is iconic, though. It is very iconic. Where Arl Stein goes and he torments Canada for a while. <laughs> and he litters. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, you can let us know. You can always find the show at Pop Rant Radio on Facebook and Twitter. If you are listening to us on iTunes, please rate and review. It really helps out the show. Yep. And we don't say this one enough, but tell a friend. If you're enjoying the podcast, tell a friend. That's really the thing that helps us out the most, I think. That it does. (laughs) As always, we'd like to thank Major for the theme song. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And other than that, we will see you next week for one final episode of Spooktober. It's another R.L. Stein episode. It will not be another (laughs) R.L. Stein episode. So thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Prepare for a scare.